Hey guys, Coach Justin from Ultimate Baseball Training. And in today's video, I wanted to give you some really short, quick, actionable hitting tips that you can take with you right to the field. And if you like this style of video, then let me know and I'll be sure to make more of them. But today we're talking about how to crush more home runs at the plate. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. All right, guys, the very first tip that I have for you when it comes to crushing more home runs, it has nothing to do with launch angle or advanced movement patterns. In fact, this tip right here is often overlooked by a lot of players, right? But what do we see by a lot of players when they get in the box and they're trying to hit a home run? What do we see? We see them start to tense up. We see them start to squeeze the sawdust out of the bat. They got a tight grip and then their shoulders tighten up and their entire body's tightened up. They're still as a statue and they're trying to just absolutely crush the ball and so my first tip is be loose and relaxed and the reason why I say that is because loose muscles are fast muscles right loose muscles are fast muscles but tight muscles are slow muscles right um, and so I want to encourage you to stay loose and it really starts from the top down in my opinion the only part of you that shouldn't be loose you should have an aggressive mind okay aggressive mind but the rest of your body should be nice and loose so when you get into your stance a couple key points in terms of becoming more loose becoming relaxed because it's easy to say but how do we actually accomplish that the very first thing I want you to focus on is actually top down focus on your jaw right because when we clench our teeth right when we clench our face muscles it causes the rest of our body to tense up as well think about if you're a, if you're in a fight or if you're a boxer and you get really mad at someone what's the first thing you do you clench your teeth you clench your your face muscles and that causes everything else to tense up right so if we have a tight jaw when we're hitting it's gonna actually transfer down the rest of our body so that's the very first thing make sure that your jaw and your face is actually just nice and loose and relaxed then from there working down we want to make sure our shoulders are relaxed because if you have tight shoulders again your hands are gonna get tight everything else in your body is gonna get tight as well so loose jaw loose shoulders you know if you sit at a computer too long speaking of your shoulders and if you're typing too high right down here would be perfect but if you're typing too high eventually your shoulders are gonna get really tense and tight and then your neck's gonna get tight and you're literally gonna stress yourself out because of that because it's a it's an awkward position right so we want to avoid that in hitting as well so loose jaw loose shoulders and then from there we go into having a nice relaxed loose grip you want to make sure that you're holding the bat somewhat out in your fingertips you don't want to hold it really really deep in your palm right but we don't want to squeeze the sawdust out of the bat we want to make sure we have a loose grip one thing I want to make sure that you avoid when you're in your stance is try to not twist your bat. I see some younger players to keep a loose grip, they twist their bat like this. And what happens, the reason why I don't recommend that is you twist your bat and the pitcher goes into his motion and all of a sudden my hands are in an awkward position like this. And then I go in my swing and all of a sudden I got bat drag and I have a loop in my swing and stuff all because I didn't have the proper grip. So I don't recommend twisting the bat but if you struggle squeezing the bat too tight, you can always, you know, wiggle your fingers just a little bit. And I recommend, you know, having a little bit of movement with your bat. For younger players, I don't recommend them having a ton of movement, but I think a little bit of movement is important. And that leads me to um, the, the next, the last part about being, you know, loose and relaxed. We want to make sure we have some sort, sort of movement in our swing. And that's, you know, in our legs and in our upper body, because for two reasons, if you just stand here like this, like a statue, without any rhythm, any flow, right? Rhythm, hitting is rhythm and timing. So if you just stand here like this, like a statue, that's bad for two reasons. Number one, you're gonna tighten up if you're standing here you know, like this. Number two is you actually have to overcome inertia in order to get your swing started. So if you're like this, eventually you've probably heard something that's in motion tends to stay in motion, something at rest tends to stay at rest. Well, if you're like this, you're at rest. And so it's gonna be that much harder, it's gonna add an additional step to your swing, right? So we wanna avoid that at all costs. I'm not saying you have to move a ton. All I'm saying is have just a little bit of rhythm, okay? Back and forth just a little bit and maybe just back and forth a little bit with your hands as well. This is fine. You have some rhythm, you have some timing and it makes it that much easier to go into your load and your stride and get a good swing off. But that's the first tip to crushing more home runs. Loose muscles or fast muscles is gonna to lead to more bat speed and more power. All right, the next tip I have for you when it comes to crushing more home runs is you need to have an aggressive versus a passive mentality. And this is, again, often overlooked 
part of hitting home runs. Everyone wants to get caught up in the latest buzzwords, but your mentality has so much to do with your results at the plate. So an example that I love to use, okay? Let's say you're taking batting practice, right? Regular old batting practice, and it's two separate days, okay? And the first day, you have a BP pitcher who's, you know, he's your go-to guy. He is a money BP pitcher. He can hit any single spot. If you tell him, hey, I want to work inside today, he'll, you know, paint the inside corner. If you tell him, hey, put it right here today, he's gonna put it and literally be able to hit your bat. We all know that those, you know, some of those BP throwers that are just absolutely money. So that's your BP thrower day one. Now, day two, maybe that guy's sick, he can't make it to practice, whatever. Day two, you have another coach or another guy throwing you BP, and let's say he, you know, really, really struggles to get the ball over the plate. You tell him to throw you inside and they're outside, they're up, down. You're worried about some pitches are coming at you, so you got to duck and get out of the way. So here's the example that I love to use, right? That's two separate pitchers, two separate days. Which day are you going to be more comfortable hitting? Seems like a no-brainer, right? Obviously day one. But the important thing is why are you more comfortable day one? Well, the reasoning is because on day one, you know that that pitcher is going to put the ball over the plate. So what that tells your brain is you're not thinking about, okay, I'm going to see the ball and if it's a strike, then I'm going to swing. You know it's going to be there. So automatically in your mind, every single pitch after your first round, you start getting into a groove, right? You're attacking the baseball because you know it's going to be there. And so after you get loose your first round or two, then you hop in the cage and you're like, all right, I'm going to see how far I can take this dude. And you really start going after the ball with an attack mentality okay but on day two what do you do instead day two you're like man this guy can't get it over the plate you're sitting in the batter's box okay if he throws it over the plate this time I'll swing oh there's one behind me okay next pitch that one's in the dirt you're not truly uh, attacking the baseball because you're worried about well I wonder if it's gonna be a strike or not okay so I love that example because that's a difference between an aggressive versus a passive mentality. Which day out of those two days do you think you're gonna hit the ball harder and hit more home runs? Is it gonna be every single pitch the first day when you're aggressive and you're trying to absolutely hammer the ball and see how deep you can take him because you know it's gonna be a strike? You have a good yes, yes, no mentality. Is it gonna be that day? Or is it gonna be the day where you're wishy-washy? Eh, I don't know, maybe I'll swing if it's a strike. And so obviously day one is going to result in more power, more home runs. But you can learn something from that example, and, and that's how you crush more home runs. You have to have an aggressive mindset. You have to realize, guys, your baseball bat, man, you got a weapon in your hands, and you have to have the mentality of, yes, this particular pitch, when I step in the box, I am swinging. If it's over the white of the plate, I am banging. And if you have that yes, yes, yes mentality, it's very easy if it's a ball to hold, you know, hold off for a split second, tap the brakes, right? It's very easy to do that. But on the flip side, it's very hard if you're sitting in there, well, I wonder if this pitch is going to be a strike, and then you see the ball and then you decide to swing. It's very, very challenging to do that and make contact, let alone hit the ball with any authority. All right, so now we're loose and relaxed. We have an aggressive versus a passive mentality. Now the last key to crushing more home runs is separation, achieving separation. So this is another term that kind of gets thrown around quite a bit, but I'm not sure all younger players fully understand this term. So all separation is, when I talk about separation, is separation from basically my lower half and my upper half, my lower body versus my lower body, okay? And I love to use the example, imagine that I have a rubber band in between my fingers, okay? And I'm only holding it that far apart and I pull it apart to there. There's gonna be some tension built up there, right? But it's just gonna be a little bit, okay? As opposed to if I have that same rubber band and I really, really stretch it out to here, Obviously, that's going to have so much more energy built up. In fact, that rubber band's probably going to explode, right? And that's what we want to do. We want to explode on the baseball um, as a hitter. So the way that that translates to the swing, the rubber band example, is I see a lot of players, if you pay attention to my hands, a lot of players start with their hands right here. And they go into their load and their stride, and their hands don't move, and they don't allow this front arm to lengthen it at all. So when they get to their launch position, meaning my front foot strikes the ground, their hands are in here like this. And then from there, yeah, they can rotate a little bit, but basically all they have is throwing their hands at the baseball. They don't have any sort of torque or whip action built up. So the way that you achieve quality separation, or at first let me show you what quality separation looks like, is when I go into my load and my stride, 
I want to have a good lat stretch here. I want this front arm not barred out like this, but I want to have some length to it. And then my front heel is going to drop. My hips are going to begin to rotate, right? But I still have my hands back here and there's separation between my lower half is starting to turn, but my upper half is still coiled back. And if you do this at home right now and you get into a position where your hips start to fire and everything else is still back here, you're gonna feel, like I said, in your lats, you're gonna feel so much torque built up that you can then just explode on the baseball. But the key is, how do we get to separation? And a lot of coaches out there teach, you know, when you go into your load to load your hands and you know push your hands back and that's not the proper way to do it okay because even if you do that you load your hands that's artificial and still from there all i have to do is throw my hands at the ball it's not going to be a very powerful swing right the way this is actually accomplished is you allow your hands to actually stay in the same place and as you stride towards the pitcher you're basically walking away from your hands so this is what it looks like i'm in my regular stance okay i go into my load when i go into my load i'm not pushing my hands back in fact they're staying in the exact same spot but when i stride forward they're still staying in the same spot but my body's moving this way and my hands are staying in the same spot. You see that? And so that automatically is gonna get you into better launch position. You're gonna have more separation. So that's really the key. In your load, the load is just a gather. The load is just a weight shift. It's not um, a way for you to generate power. The load is a timing mechanism. So I want you in a loose, comfortable stance. I want you to go into your load and your hands should stay in the same spot. Okay, and then as you stride forward, then your hands naturally walk away from your body or your body walks away from your hands. And then you get into a good launch position like this. I got a good lat or a good length in this front arm here, a good lat stretch. My front foot's open about 45 degrees. My knob's facing the catcher. And then from there, you're really gonna be able to get on plane with the pitch and crush more home runs. And last thing, two quick drills that I really recommend that you try out because it's gonna help you get the feeling of separation. First one is launch position walks. So we're gonna start with the handle of our bat, this part here on our neck, knob facing the catcher. We're gonna have a narrow stance. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda have a weight shift back, rock back a little bit, and we're gonna take a big stride. And as we stride, notice my hands start here and they stay there, but my body is moving forward. So I'm not pushing my hands back, they're staying in the same spot but my body's moving forward. So that's one launch position walk. Then I bring my feet together and do the same thing. And you do that over and over, so that's launch position walks. And the last drill that's really cool, you're gonna need a fence or some sort of a net. This is gonna provide immediate feedback. All you're gonna do is place your back foot pretty much on the fence. You're gonna get into your normal stance and you're gonna go into your load and your stride and get to that launch position. And if you allow your hands to naturally separate on their own as your body moves forward, your hands are not gonna hit that fence. However, if I artificially push them back, you saw there that they're gonna hit the fence. So a great drill to provide immediate feedback. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I have a Bat Speed Boosters free workout that I wanna share with you. All you have to do to grab this free Bat Speed workout, just click on that very first link below this video in the description. That'll take you to a page. I'm just gonna need your email address and then I'll grant you access to the Bat Speed Boosters workout. So go ahead and click that link and do that now. Go pick up your free Bat Speed Boosters workout. And as always, if you're not already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We're coming out with new baseball videos every single week. If you enjoyed this video, leave me a thumbs up. And last thing, get in the comments section and let me know what you'd like to see in future videos on the channel. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.